Hello. I am here to say a few words about video conferencing, which is uh, a, a medium of communication that I love very much. And you may ask, how can a person love uh, a type of communication? And I, I love it because I feel it, it helps me uh, communicate with other people, and I feel it can help other people communicate with each other. And that communication is uh, very important to me. So first of all, what is video conferencing? Video conferencing is when uh, all the parties in the communication event can send video and audio and receive video and audio. So it can be a two-way, it can be a three-way, any number of people can be in on it as long as they can all send and receive. Connected to a video conference, you may also have people who can watch that conversation and call in by telephone or send in emails. So those peripheral people can, can feed into it, but they are not actually in the video conference. They are uh, interacting with the, with the video conference. And uh, I have been involved in these events, uh, mostly in the academic world, but I, I consider myself also a, a theater director, and I'm looking forward to uh, helping organize theater, music, dance events with performers at different locations, uh, each one uh, contributing their image, which can be arranged on the screen in different ways. And that arrangement on the screen, uh, it can be one arrangement on the screen that is seen, that same arrangement can be seen in each of the different locations, plus it can be webcast. So again, you have this idea of people on the outside watching the whole thing. It can be done for artistic events, it can be done for university events. In the past, it's mostly been done in the business world and in the worlds of uh, government administration, where people had to have these important meetings to exchange information. But now, uh, with the uh, spreading of the internet and, and, and all, and uh, broadband internet, it's becoming more conceivable for individuals to do it as well as schools and all. One other application of video conferencing can be citizens meetings in small groups. A small group means five or six people. That's the a, that's a size group you really need to have a chance to talk and then take a little rest but not take too much of a rest. If there are ten people in the group you won't have a chance to talk again for a long time. But if there's only five or six uh, it's a, it's a good size, it's an interesting dynamic. You can watch the other five people, they can watch you, and you can have another turn soon. So, in the public sphere, that's S-P-H-E-R-E, -E, that's the you know, civil society, there are many issues that come up. There may be local neighborhood issues, city issues, state, national, and there are some global issues that everyone on the planet is involved in relating to global warming, for example. So I foresee, I feel there's a need for citizens around the world to partake in these meetings. If it's just a community meeting in your neighborhood, you can meet face to face if you like. But if it's a global meeting, uh, it might be useful to, to meet with five or six other people by video conference. And uh, in general, in video conference, one way is for everyone to see everyone else on the screen at the same time. So in that case, the screen would be split into six squares. Uh, perhaps, or another way is uh, the person who's presently speaking, their image can be on the screen. There's sometimes an automatic system where the system detects who is speaking and it puts that person's image on the screen for the other five to watch. So, you know, myself and many people had despaired of uh, I'm getting the signal that we're going to end in how many seconds or how many minutes? Ten, Ten seconds? Yeah. Well, this was the first chapter. You'll have to uh, do, catch a second chapter about video conferencing in the public sphere. Hello. In these next few minutes, I'm going to address the question, how could video conferencing change our lives? And uh, the first thing I want to say is that uh, here in May of 2007, it's a, a June 2007, it seems pretty clear to me that within a year or two, uh, more and more telephone systems will have video capability. So I take it for granted that 
in the near future, our telephones will be video telephones. That we will have the option of also seeing our friends and relatives and business associates when we give them a telephone call. So that's a, a starting point. But beyond that, I uh, submit that uh, in two general areas, video conferencing can really improve life on the planet. And that is, the two areas that I, I'm thinking of are general alienation from society and the problem of, of unemployment. First with unemployment, I, I feel that uh, even with the telephone, there's a lot of work that people can do. Even with the computer by internet, with text, there's a lot of people can, uh, work people can do from wherever they are. But with video conferencing, which can include uh, computer work, there's going to be a lot of work that people can do from wherever they are, wherever they have a mobile internet connection. And I believe that more governments and more businesses will take advantage of uh, the workforce out there uh, which will be working by telecommute. In other words, people who will work from home or wherever they are who won't have to physically commute. So um, that's one thing. Uh, all of the uh, uh, things like counseling, things like any sort of information uh, sharing, uh, all the call centers. It's, if it's people can do it by video conferencing, there's going to be a lot of work that people can do and the day may come when the concept of, of unemployment will, will kind of fade away because there'll be so many different ways to, to work by video conference from wherever you are. The other uh, thing I mentioned was alienation, which means feeling of isolation from society. If I can go to the, to the internet and put in a search word, someone who else who is interested in um, any subject in the world, and then see a list of people who have put video blogs up on that subject, and who are interested possibly in video conferencing to discuss that subject, how can we talk about loneliness? You know, I used to feel growing up that I was trapped in my apartment in New York City, that I had no way of finding people of, of similar interests. I had no way of finding friends. It was like water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. But uh, I believe with the video conferencing ability and a system in place by which we can find each other through keywords, uh, that we'll be able to overcome that to a large degree.